so I work at a pizza place, usually inside as my insurance does not cover claims when driving for business, but occasionally I will cover a delivery shift for one of the drivers because the money is good. Our delivery area includes a few new development, upper middle class, cookie cutter neighborhoods, bad tips, an older 1940s era village, average tips, two apartment complexes, great tips, some trailer parks, great tips or no tips, and a bunch of rural areas, usually good tips. Not rural to the point of seeing hundreds of stars at night, but enough that you couldn't hear your neighbors yell. So about a week ago, I was covering a delivery shift. I come back to the shop feeling pretty good. I'm averaging $5 a delivery, and they've been all pretty good and pretty close, and I check to see if I have any more deliveries. I have one to an address I have never seen before, and it's out on one of those more rural roads. I asked the kid who took the order what was up, because there were special instructions on the ticket. He says... They said go around back, because the front door is not operational. I'm like, okay, that's not that uncommon. People often want you to go around back. Either they painted the door, the house shifted and it's a bitch to open, or they're just hanging out back. So as I'm driving out to the house, I get an odd feeling. I don't really like the idea of going to the back of some house out in the sticks. It would be all too easy for some thugs to order a pizza to an abandoned house, there are quite a few in the more rural areas, then jump the delivery guy. I figured I'll just scope the place out when I get there, and if it seems sketchy, just call them and make up some bowl about how it's against company policy to go around the back of houses to prevent robberies. As I'm driving around the house, I realize it's towards the end of this road that gets less populated the further down you go. Great. I'm pretty near the address and driving slow. I see this abandoned looking house, set back from the road with no address and in a bunch of trees. I think, that house better not be it. So I drive past and check the next house's address, and lo and behold, that abandoned looking one was the right house. Shit. At this point I'm not super worried, though because out in the boonies the standards of upkeep on your house are pretty low, so a house in disrepair isn't all that unusual. I double back to this house and pull into the driveway. At this point I'm getting bad vibes and it just doesn't feel right. I park my car at the very end of the driveway with the rear of the car on the shoulder so anyone passing by can clearly see it. At this point I call back to the shop and tell them I'm at this sketchy house and if I don't call back in 4 or 5 minutes, call me and if I don't answer, call the cops. While I'm on the phone, I take a chance to take a good look at the house. It looks extremely abandoned and not just in disrepair. The driveway is crumbling. Bits are gravel, and there are weeds growing out of it. There is no mailbox, no trash cans, no car, no lawnmowers, no landscaping, no kids' toys, absolutely nothing in the yard. The yard hasn't been mowed in what looks like years. The house is total crap. The roof is all but falling apart. The siding is falling apart. The back deck, which comes around the side, is falling apart. The only part of the house that looks even a little bit decent is the allegedly non-functioning front door. The windows are all shut. It's 95 degrees and humid, and this place does not have AC. They all have the blinds or curtains shut. The few that aren't actually are boarded up. I don't even see any wires running to this house. It's not quite dark, but currently dusk and there isn't a sign of any lights on in the house. At this point I'm starting to get pretty nervous. I'm a 5'10 male, 180 pounds, not in any great shape, but I did take karate for 10 years, so I'm not helpless, but I do try to avoid any sort of confrontation I can, as I am mostly a pacifist. 
I'm not too concerned about getting robbed. No skin off my teeth, it's not my money. I mean, I would rather not get robbed, but I'm mostly worried about getting jumped or killed. It's a fairly safe area, but recently there have been some rather unsavory people moving in from the city. A big spike in home invasions and robberies, but more worrying is a few stabbings and assaults. So it's time to either nut up or shut up. I'm not just going to go charging in there like a fool, so I get out my phone and call the number they gave when ordering. While I'm doing that, I'm also getting the pizza out and make sure to leave my door open. A running car half in the road at an abandoned house with the door open looks suspicious, right? I figured if shit does go down, it might look out of place enough to make someone stop. Not that there is really any traffic this far down the road, unfortunately. I'm starting to walk up to the house while the phone's ringing. It rings twice, and then an automated message comes on. It says something along the lines of this phone number is associated with an internet texting app, one of the free ones you download and let you send free texts from a different phone number over a data connection. We have had issues with people using numbers from those services for pranks in the past. This is a huge red flag. My heart is now pounding in my throat and my whole body is telling me to bail. I don't want to get a reputation of being a flaky bitch as a driver and lose any future delivery shifts and that is why I have not bailed yet. So I'm just standing there holding a pizza looking at this house but not wanting to venture around to the back of it. I'm hoping that the resident will look out the window and come out by the road to get their food. I begin looking at the front windows, checking for any signs of life. I see a blind go up on the one window next to the front door, and a really creepy looking guy with a hat pulled low and big sunglasses on is looking out. Now remember, he is in a completely dark house surrounded by trees, at dusk. There is no reason for him to be wearing sunglasses. I also see what appears to be a big guy standing behind him in the room. This could have been anything though. When he sees me looking, he mouths something and he darts away, presumably towards the alleged broken front door. At this point I nope the fuck out. I had stayed pretty close to the car, so it was only a few steps away, and I jumped into the driver's seat and throw the pizza into my passenger seat, something I would never do since I'm really anal about keeping my car clean. I slam it into reverse, before I get the clutch all the way in, so I grind my gears a little, again something I never do. Without looking, I simultaneously slam and lock my door and floor it backwards onto the main road, slipping my clutch horribly, but at this point I don't care, I don't want to fuck around and risk a stall. I didn't even check for cross traffic, really stupid on this part, and I start to drive away and look back at the house. The screen door on the outside of the front door is now open, but the front is still shut. The guy isn't out in the yard yelling to wait or come back or anything. He's just gone. So I pull over a little ways up the road to call back to the shop and tell them I'm all good and I'll elaborate when I get back. The people never called back to inquire about their food. People usually call if their pizza is 15 minutes late and these people never got it so it's really strange they didn't call. Pretty much confirming they were up to no good. After telling my coworkers about it, we conclude it was definitely a robbery at the very least. So we put the address and phone number on our no delivery list and ate their pizza. I doubt I would have actually gotten murdered or anything. Robbed with maybe a gun pulled or a little roughing up, yes. It was still very unnerving. Especially that I could have easily gotten into some serious trouble by just doing my job especially if those idiots picked a slightly less abandoned house to set up at. A little background. 
I used to work for an armored car company years ago and was part of a three-man highway ATM crew. We would go out every night and drive to small towns around our base city, restocking ATMs, so the route took us to some very quiet areas sometimes. On one such winter night, we were on the way out of town and decided to stop to get some food at Subway. It was almost closing time for them and we got there maybe 10 minutes before and I could see three customers still inside. My driver had already had his bag lunch, so I went in with my partner. Immediately something didn't feel right. One customer who was just getting his sandwich was okay. He paid and left. The other two, well first of all they looked like they had crawled out of a dumpster, and the second they saw us, they backed away from the counter and waited. I looked at the young girl behind the counter, and she gave me a look that said, please don't leave. And then I looked back at the two, who were now nervously whispering between themselves and eyeing the guns on our belts. I said to my partner, we have lots of time, let's just eat here. He looked at them and agreed. I radioed the driver and we sat at the nearest booth kind of daring them to pull something. The two dirty fucks whispered between themselves again and bid a hasty retreat out the door. I saw them walk past our armored van and peek in the window, only to have the crap scared out of them when the driver turned abruptly and gave them a hard fuck off look. As soon as they were gone, I asked the girl what the deal was, and she said they had come in several minutes before we got there. Apparently they kept hanging around, waiting until all the other customers had left, never spoke to her at all, just stared. We suggested she call the police and wait there until they showed up. After descriptions were given, the cops told her about some robberies that had been happening around the area, and it sounded like the same two guys. So I am in full belief that had we not come by when we did, they would have probably pulled a knife on her and robbed the joint. Back in the 90s, my family would drive to Florida every year. Typically, it was my father, mother, brother, and myself who would drive down to spend a week with my grandparents, who would snowbird in St. Pete Beach. My parents were having a lot of problems in 1996 and 97, so when I was 8 or 9, my aunt and two cousins, a boy and a girl, went with us to Florida. My father stayed behind. Our plan was to drive from a very small town outside of Indianapolis to St. Pete Beach through the night, which is around 18 hours. We left around 6 p.m., armed with a ton of DVDs for the new DVD player in my mom's Tahoe. The four kids were in the back. There were only three seats in the back seat, so one of us took a turn riding in the trunk area while the rest of us sat in an actual seat. The two boys were the ones who were fighting over the seats, so my girl cousin and I stayed in the seat while the other two were fighting. It was dark soon after we left, but it didn't really matter because we were all either napping or watching movies while our moms talked in the front seat. Sometime around 1am we stopped in southern Tennessee for gas. It was a small gas station, some place that my mom had seen from the highway and that was an easy access. Because we were young, we were getting out to go to the bathroom, even if we were sleeping. My aunt took her two children to the bathroom first, while my little brother and I waited for my mom to fill up the car. I got out to walk around and stretch, and had the chance to really look at the gas station and surrounding area. Just behind the gas station were a few little houses the lights were on and I could see people in them, but I didn't pay much attention to them. The station was empty except for our family and the attendant on duty in the store. It wasn't long before our aunt and cousin came back and my older boy cousin climbed into the trunk as my aunt got into the driver's side. 
My sleepy little brother, my mom and I went to the women's bathroom. My brother, around five at the time, wanted to go into the men's bathroom, but my mom said no. He could just come in with us. He did, but complained about it while we were in there. I went to the bathroom first and because I was the oldest, I wanted to get outside the bathroom and look for a snack or something on my own. I stepped outside the bathroom and noticed a man at the counter. It wasn't hard to notice the guy. He was shouting at the clerk and waving a gun around. I luckily hadn't been noticed and I slipped back into the bathroom quickly without the door closing and locking me out. My mom was finishing up and she must have noticed my expression because she asked me what was wrong. I told her that there was a guy out there with a gun and that he was shouting at the clerk. Since she was done, she told my brother and I to stay back and peeked out the door. She shut the door and locked it so no one would come in. She told my brother and I that once the coast was clear, we were going to run to the car and get in, no questions asked. We kept listening for anything to change, and soon it was quiet on the other side of the door. We looked outside and the clerk noticed us finally. If you run now, he won't see you, the clerk had said. I wasn't sure where the guy was, but he wasn't out front anymore. Is it safe outside? My mom had asked him. The guy nodded and we ran out the door and hopped into our still open SUV. My mom shut the back door where my cousin was and the side doors as we climbed in and climbed into the front seat incredibly quickly. We have to go now, she told my aunt. What's wrong? Go! Before the engine turned on, I heard two loud bangs. And as we were driving down the street, there were police cars driving in the direction of the gas station. Finally, after we were a few miles away, we told my aunt and cousins what had happened. They said that while we were in the bathroom, they had heard what sounded like doors slamming really hard or cars backfiring. With nothing to compare it to, we didn't know what gunshots would sound like and my aunt and cousins in the car didn't know that they should react. Living in a small town with very little violence at the time didn't prepare us for something like that. We drove through the night on edge and arrived in Florida with a sigh of relief the next day. I tried to check the news for any reports of a gas station robbery in Tennessee. When we finally came across an AM channel talking about a fatal armed robbery attempt at that exact location. The report stated that while the assailant, carrying a 45 snub nose revolver was attempting to open the safe, the clerk took matters into his own hands, placing two rounds into the would-be robber's cervical spine, ending his life instantly. My mouth was dropped at the realization of how close to danger my family and I actually were, but realized that every action, in this case the robber, reaps an equal and opposite reaction. So I work at a pizza place, usually inside as my insurance does not cover claims when driving for business, but occasionally I will cover a delivery shift for one of the drivers because the money is good. Our delivery area includes a few new development upper middle class cookie cutter neighborhoods, bad tips, an older 1940s era village, average operational. I'm like, okay. That's not that uncommon. People often want you to go around back. Either they painted the door, the house shifted and it's a bitch to open, or they're just hanging out back. So as I'm driving out to the house, I get an odd feeling. I don't really like the idea of going to the back of some house out in the sticks. It would be all too easy. Urging five dollars a delivery, and they've been all pretty good and pretty close and I check to see if I have any more deliveries. I have one to an address I have never seen before, 
and it's out on one of those more rural roads. I asked the kid who took the order what was up because there were special instructions on the ticket. He says, They said go around back because the front door is not off tips. Two apartment complexes, great tips. Some trailer parks, great tips or no tips. And a bunch of rural areas, usually good tips. Not roar to the point of seeing hundreds of stars at night, but enough that you couldn't hear your neighbors yell. So about a week ago, I was covering a delivery shift. I come back to the shop feeling pretty good. I'm happy for some thugs to order a pizza to an abandoned house. There are quite a few in the more rural areas. Then jump the delivery guy. I figured I'll just scope the place out when I get there. And if it seems sketchy... Just call them and make up some bowl about how it's against company policy to go around the back of houses to prevent robberies. As I'm driving around the house, I realize it's towards the end of this road that 